One of the most important things you can do as a video editor, especially on larger projects, is organize your footage. And if you're not using the media page in DaVinci Resolve to do that, well, you're missing out. And I'm gonna prove that to you by showing you three tools in the media page that will really help you organize your footage in a way that will allow you to find whatever footage or song or sound effect you're looking for right when you need it. So let's just jump into DaVinci Resolve. I've already got the media page open. Let's take a quick tour to see what we're working with. First of all, we've got media storage. Now, if we come over here, we look, we have got a bunch of different files here. These are all the folders, all the drives, everything that's on my computer. So if we come in, Let's say we go to my main drive here and we go to YouTube and we go to videos. We can look at my studio tour. If we click on that, it'll take a minute, but we've got all of my footage from the studio tour here. And I could go ahead and drag this into my media pool and we'd be all good. Next to our media storage, we have our live view monitor. So if I click on a piece of footage, you can see we've got our footage right here. And then over to the right, we've got a few things that we can look at. We can turn on audio to be able to see our audio as the video plays. We've got our metadata, which we can toggle on and off. We've got our inspector, which if we click on a piece of footage, nothing's gonna show up there until we actually drag it into our media pool. We've got capture, which we're not gonna really deal with right now because I don't have the equipment for it. But that's about it for this top layer. Now let's go ahead and come down and take a look at our media pool. So once we bring clips into our project, this is where we're gonna see our clips. And you can see if I come, shrink that down or expand that and expand that. We've got three different sections here on the left. We've got our bins. These are bins that we would create and these are just project specific bins. And then below that, we've got power bins. Power bins are really cool because you can actually drag something into a power bin and it will be available in every single project that you create as long as that file stays in its original folder. And then below that, we've got smart bins. We're gonna be taking a look at that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get out of all of this and minimize that so we're not dealing with it anymore. Let's open up my internal storage, come down to in progress, and we're gonna click on media page tutorial, and you'll see I've got a bunch of footage and sound effects and music, and these are all from this same site, which happens to be today's sponsor, MixKit. MixKit is a one-stop shop for stock footage, music, and sound effects that you can use in both your personal and commercial projects. They've even got templates for Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and as of recently, even DaVinci Resolve. And the best part about it, it's free. MixKit is brought to you by the people over at Envato, so you know that this stuff on that site is high quality. So if you're looking for stock footage or music or sound effects for your next video, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to MixKit today. Thanks so much to MixKit for sponsoring this video. Now let's get this stuff into our project. Now, normally if I had all this stuff, it would be separated into folders like A-roll, B-roll, music, sound effects, and all that stuff. But I purposefully left this a mess so I can show you the true power of the media page. So let's just go ahead and highlight all of this and we're going to drag it into our media pool. Now, DaVinci Resolve is gonna ask if I wanna change the project frame rate. I don't because I've already set that and I don't want any of these clips to override that setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click don't change. And now you can see all of my assets, all my footage, my sound effects, my music, it's all in the master bin, but it's very, very unorganized. So we're gonna do three things in order to organize this. First, we're gonna tweak some of the metadata. So if we click our first clip here and we come up and we turn off the inspector and we turn on metadata, you'll see we've got a bunch of information that we can fill out. And we, if we actually hit this drop down box in the top right of the metadata, you can see that we can look at shot and scene, which is what we're on now. We can look at clip details and this will tell us our time code and our start frame and our end frame, how many frames are in the clip, bit depth, all that kind of stuff. 
We can look at the camera, which we don't have right now. We could fill all this out if we want. We can look at tech details, stereo 3D and VFX, audio, audio tracks, production, production crew, and reviewed by, but today we're just going to focus on shot and scene. So let's go ahead and fill out some metadata for this clip. We'll do a short description here, which is two girls in a pottery class. We don't have any comments. We can do some keywords here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually do keywords for each of these characters. So let's say that this girl here is Melissa. So we'll add a keyword here. Melissa, and we will add this one here will be, let's say Rachel. Now there's a different way to be able to put our people in here and that's by using the people detect feature. I'll do another video on that in the future. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Let's move on though to shot and we'll say this shot is a long shot. We'll say this is scene one, take three, and that's all we'll use right now. And I'm real quick gonna go through all my video clips and just fill out the rest of these that have people. And one other thing that I want to do is add an additional keyword to all of my video clips that have people in it. And I'm going to add the keyword people. Now I'm going to do a couple other quick keywords just for organizational purposes. I'm going to select the aerial of the trees and this other scenic clip here. And I'm going to come into keywords and I'm just going to say the keyword is forest. And we'll say that both of these are going into scene three. And we'll say that this well, let's apply and then we'll just say that this one is take one and this one is take two. Now let's grab the rest of our clips here and we'll add the keyword city. And we'll say these are all going into scene five and we'll just go through and add a take. One, two, three, four. And then I did not add this one in here. So we'll just say that this is city, scene five, take five. Now what we're gonna do is grab all of my songs. And this time we're gonna come over to our drop down box. So we're gonna go down to audio, audio file type, music, click save. And now we're gonna grab all of our sound effects. And we're gonna go down to audio file type and just put in SFX. And click save. So that's metadata and with metadata, you can input all of the information about every single clip that you want. And then you can use that information to organize your clips into smart bins. So let's come down here and we're gonna take a look at smart bins. First, let's open up our keywords. If we open that up and we come through to all of our different keywords. We've got Chloe, so we've got our clip of Chloe, all of our city clips, our forest clips, our clip of Melissa and Rachel, another city clip. We've got James, Karen, Michael, people is all of our people, and then Rick. Now let's say I wanted to organize my footage by this scene that it goes in. I can come down here, right click in smart bins, click add smart bin. Let's call this one scene one. And we can come down to media pool properties, hit that drop down box. Go down to shot and scene. Go to scene, contains, and then type in one and hit create. And all of our scene one clips are here. And we can go ahead and do that for the rest of our scenes. 
And you'll see I accidentally created a folder instead of a scene here. And that's actually good because I can show you what folders do. Let's go ahead and rename this to scenes. And now we can drag all of our scenes into the scenes folder. Let's go ahead and minimize that. Right click, click add folder. And this one's gonna be called audio. We're gonna add a smart bin and we'll call this music. We'll go to metadata audio tracks. Wrong. Metadata audio. Audio file type contains music. And hit create. And then we'll add one more smart bin. Call this one SFX. Metadata audio. Audio file type contains SFX. And hit create. And now through the power of filtering, we have now organized all of our footage. Let's come back up to our master bin because I want to show you the final thing, which is bulk renaming. And you can do this based on the metadata, which is super, super cool. So let's go ahead and we will highlight all of our video clips. We're going to right click, go to clip attributes, come to name. So what I want to do is rename these based on the keywords and the scene and the take. So let's go ahead and start with keywords. So what I'm going to do is hit percent and that's going to bring up all of the metadata that we can use in our titles. And I'm going to type in keywords. So we're going to go keywords and we're going to type in scene and we're going to hit percent again and we're going to type in scene. And we're going to type in take and then hit percent again, type take. Go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see we've got Chloe, people, scene three, take two, city, scene five, take one, city, scene five, take two, and so on and so forth. So between tweaking the metadata, creating smart bins and bulk renaming based on the metadata, I've now organized all of my footage and audio in a way that if I need to find something, all I gotta do is click a couple times and I've found it. And this is why I say, if you're not using the media page, you're seriously missing out. If you wanna know some other project settings that'll really help your workflow, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.